Good day, y'all. My name is Pekka Hyysalo, and I'm gonna tell you a little story about my fight back. It all began when I was just a tiny little baby, or when I was born. But the first years of my life were just amazing. My parents took me to do all these great activities, and I fell in love with winter and snow. I just loved it. Then I began cross-country skiing, which evolved into downhill skiing. We have some hills in Finland, and I just loved it. Then I started competing in it, and when I was 17 years old, I finished to the podium for the first time internationally. And this was my dream. My, my dream was not only competing, because a very important part of skiing was also filming and taking photos. And this picture is of the best powder run of my life. It was just like a dream. I was floating down, and I loved every single second of it. But in Finland, we do not have such amazing powder slopes. We have parks, and on springtime, those parks are really soft and mellow and great. And I did a lot of film shooting also in Finland. And in the spring 2010, I had just graduated from Alpine Skiing Upper Secondary School. I was filming this short film, and they ranked me number 11 in the world big air ranking. It was okay because I was still a student and in my opinion the best days were still ahead coming. And when I would turn proper professional, then I would definitely drop that other number one, and I would be the best. Then we filmed this short movie. We were filming that for five days, and those were the five best days of my career. But the last one of those five days was the last day of my free skiing career at all. It was just another jump. I had done it hundreds of times before. But this time, a very strong blast of wind came from behind me, and I could do nothing. I was in the air, 
and I overshot the huge kicker, and I landed sideways, and everything went black. The ambulance helicopter couldn't fly, so I was taken to the nearest ICU with an ambulance, and that ride took really lo a really long time. I, I had gained a very serious traumatic brain injury. I fell into coma instantly after the crash, but I couldn't wake up for three weeks when I was somehow in this world. I don't remember anything from that time, but I was transferred with an ambulance flight to southern Finland, my hometown, Turku. And in Turku, I spent my summer holiday. Now, this was not the summer holiday I was really looking forward to. But anyways, I was alive, and my family was there to support me, and I survived that long period in the Turku City Hospital. After that summer, I got to the best rehabilitation center in Finland, it was located in Helsinki, and there I was doing all that I could to get back onto skiing slope as soon as possible. But in the halfway of my rehabilitation, I went to see the doctor of that center and asked him when can I get back on my skis? I need to exercise because I have got a lot of invitations to the competitions I have only dreamt of before. This doctor broke my heart. He said that, listen, Pekka, you are very lucky to be alive. I cannot say if you will ever be able to ski again. I know that you will most likely learn to walk in two years, but I can't say that you would ever be able to ski again. I took those words and went back to my room I stayed there for one week. I was just laying in bed and crying. My life had lost every meaning it had had before. But after one week of crying, I got an idea that I have two options for the rest of my life. I can either stay here crying and give up, or then I can do the best that I can. I can go all in in my rehab, and I can come back. It's not sure that it will work out, but if I won't try, I will never be able to smile again. Then I decided to go all in, and that was a really good decision because all my friends supported me really well, and I got pretty hungry because I wanted to prove the doctor wrong. I wanted to get back on my skis. The first step was getting 
to a walker and back on my feet. It was not really nice looking, pushing that kind of clumsy thing in front of you every time you stood up. But for me, it was the best device because it allowed myself to rise on top of my own feet, and I loved it. But the hunger was getting more severe. And in 11 months after that injury, which should have killed me, I did it. I got back onto my skis. And And the first day of skiing, it was horrible. I couldn't do anything I was able to do before, but I knew how great of a thing skiing can be if you are able to do it well. So I went skiing every single day that spring. Then the summer came to Finland and I couldn't ski, but I exercised otherwise physiotherapy. And on the fall, I went to Austria and the place I, w I went in Austria had also the Austrian free skiing open half a year later. And in Austrian free skiing open, I met this guy from Germany. And we had a crazy idea. Let's put up a brand called Fight Back. And the brand will support my rehabilitation. And if my rehab is taken care of, then we can help everyone else. And I took that idea to Finland with me, and it gave my life a whole new meaning. I did my best, not only for myself, but also for everyone else. And fighting back, was the new meaning for my life I had been looking for for my whole rehabilitation. And I was doing that fight back so positively that amazing things started to happen. I was selected the most positive person in Finland back in 2014, and I still cannot believe how is that even possible, but I guess that the reason is that I have not been giving up, and I decided already in the hospital that someday I will run and finish a marathon. I may not be able to walk right now, but someday I will learn to run. And I am not saying I can run even right now, but I started to organize a running event called the Fight Back Run in Turku, my hometown. And the first time I ran there, it was 2.7 kilometers, and I fell to the ground. I was vomiting, and I had to go to an ambulance, but that did not stop me. I was sharing this message of fight back and positivity with everyone 
who dared to listen to me. And because of that, I was even chosen the best speaker of the year 2015, no, 16 in Finland. And this is something I still cannot believe because back in 2010, I couldn't form even one easy sentence because I couldn't speak at all. But in 2016, I was the speaker of the year. And this is unbelievable. I have also finished half a marathon in the fight back run. I did it a few years back, and it's the longest distance I have run this far. And even though it felt horrible, I'm really proud of it and happy that I did it. But running is not my favorite hobby. This is, this is two years ago. After that spring came the COVID and everything fell apart. I haven't been speaking to a live audience this big in years of time, but getting up here in front of you is so amazing. Thank you a lot. Well, uh, this stage today is called the inspiration stage, and I think you are the reason why it's called that. So thank you so much for, thank you. <laughs> for sharing this story. Uh, I think we can snap a bit of time for a few questions if we have from the audience, maybe one or two. Do we have anyone that has a question for Becca? Come on. <laughs> Talk with me. Talk back. Okay. Hi, um, I don't really have a question, but I just, I'm really taken back. I got really emotional. Um, I'm a snowboarder myself, so every time I go on those hills, I know the risk. And seeing your story start that way and what you've done, it's, I can't imagine how traumatizing it was. Uh, the physicality and the emotionality of everything, I'm just taken back. I think you're incredible, I'm, and I'm so grateful you were on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Is, does anyone else have something? No matter if anyone else has, doesn't have any questions, that made my trip here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and thank you, Becca. Thank you so much. Well, come on. Some of you must have some question. <laughs> okay, we'll take a last one from there. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
It's quite emotional for me as well because like when I finished high school I wanted to go to play professional football or I wanted to be a chef but I couldn't be any one of those things for whatever reasons you know life happened family or whatever and like somehow I kept dragging 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 I ended up doing my masters in Portuguese language just because I like football but I still don't play and like that's kind of something which kills me from inside that I'm not practicing what I like really like and I'm passionate about and I've been thinking about it like for the last few months, especially during the pandemic as well, like why am I not continuing the hobbies which like makes me who I am. So yeah, for me as well, like it was quite inspirational to, to hear you out and like, you know, to, to follow your passion, like no matter what, and, like no matter like even if the doctor or like whomsoever, or, like any kind of professional says, oh, you can't do it. It's due to like age, injury or whatever, I think like we should still go for it because like we all live once and I got that feeling from you today and I really appreciate it and thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Get out there. I think, I think the overarching message is that people are just very moved so, so one last big applause for Becca. Thank you.